On 19th August 2008, a group of eight Kievers entered the discovery entrance of Bigfoot Cave in California. They were a mix of experienced climbers and scouts. The group split into two teams, a scouting group, tasked with finding new passages, and a climbing group, focused on tackling the challenging routes within the Shthulhu Room, a section known for its tricky, yet doable, climbs. The climbing group, consisting of Greg Milano, John Lane, and a few others, chose a tall lead in the Chthulhu room that promised an adventurous ascent. After hours of meticulous effort, they had just finished placing their 12th bolt, securing their climb for the final push. Greg and John, who had briefly separated from the scouting team, rejoined their climbing companions, ready to take on the next challenge. As Greg was perched on a large boulder, inspecting the area for the next move, he felt an unsettling shift beneath him. The ground, which had seemed stable moments before, began to tremble slightly. Whoa, John, are you clear? Greg called out, his voice laced with sudden concern. John, still adjusting his position nearby, responded quickly but with a hint of panic. No, no, I'm not clear. His words were barely out when the cave erupted with a deafening crash. The sound of shifting boulders and the agonized screams of both men filled the cavern, echoing off the walls in a terrifying cacophony. The entire group scattered throughout the cave heard the disaster unfold. Within moments, they converged on the scene, their hearts pounding as they feared the worst. What they found was a nightmare come to life. The floor and ceiling of the choke, a narrow passage filled with loose rocks, had collapsed simultaneously. Greg, who had been standing on a large boulder, had triggered the fall. The boulders beneath him had given way, sending John into a free fall of about 10 feet before he was violently pinned between the rocks below. John's left leg was crushed, trapped under a massive boulder, while another rock had rolled onto his chest, squeezing the breath from his lungs. The pain was indescribable, a relentless pressure that made every breath a struggle. He could feel the bones in his leg grinding together, and the weight on his chest made his vision blur with pain and panic. But somehow against all odds, he managed to slither out from under the crushing weight of the boulders. His leg, however, was clearly broken, the bone shattered and useless. The group quickly assessed the situation, their minds racing to find a solution. They knew they had to get John out, but the journey to the entrance would be grueling, especially with his injury. With no professional rescue team nearby and time ticking away, they decided on a self-rescue attempt. Some members stayed close to John, offering whatever aid they could, while others scouted the easiest route back to the cave's entrance. The trek was slow and torturous. John, supported by his friends, hobbled through the dark, uneven passages of the cave. Every step sent fresh waves of pain through his shattered leg, but he gritted his teeth and pressed on, knowing that stopping was not an option. The cave had turned into a merciless maze, each shadow hiding another potential danger. Finally, after hours of painstaking progress, the group emerged from the cave at 1 a.m. Exhausted and battered, John managed to hobble out to the trailhead by the next morning. The relief of fresh air and open sky was overwhelming, but the pain in his leg was a constant reminder of the ordeal he had survived. X-rays at the hospital later revealed that John had broken his fibula, the smaller bone in the lower leg. Though the injury was serious, it could have been much worse. On February 27, 2002, three friends, Sean Gregg, Raymond Polanski, and Liz Gonzola, decided to explore Three Falls Cave in New York. The cave, hidden deep in the countryside, was privately owned and marked as off-limits due to the presence of hibernating Indiana bats. Despite the warnings, their curiosity got the better of them, and they entered the cave around 8 p.m., ready for an adventure. Sean Gregg, a 26-year-old soldier stationed at Fort Drum, was the largest of the trio, with a strong build that often made him feel invincible. His friend, 23-year-old Raymond Polanski, also a soldier at Fort Drum, was more cautious but equally eager to explore. Liz Gonzola, a 22-year-old resident of Watertown, was the most experienced having spent the last two years exploring caves in the region. It was Liz who had first told them about the bats, sparking their interest and setting the stage for the night's fateful events. 
For the first few hours, the exploration was thrilling. The narrow passages and hidden chambers of the cave revealed thousands of bats, their tiny bodies hanging in clusters from the ceiling. The group marveled at the sight, the excitement of their discovery pushing away any thoughts of the risks they were taking. But as the hours passed, the cold air and the oppressive darkness of the cave began to take their toll, making them increasingly aware of the dangers lurking in the shadows. It was then that they stumbled upon a small opening in the cave's breakdown, a narrow, jagged gap between two large rocks. Sean, driven by a mixture of bravado and curiosity, decided to squeeze through the gap, despite warnings from Liz and Raymond. His large frame made it difficult, but he was determined to push forward. As he wriggled his way through, the ancient rocks above shifted ominously. In a split second, the weight of the cave's ceiling gave way, sending a cascade of heavy stones crashing down. The sound echoed through the cavern, a deafening roar that left the group momentarily stunned. Sean felt a sharp, crushing pain as the rocks pinned him to the ground, the largest of which landed squarely on his chest and pelvis. The initial impact was so intense that it drove the breath from his lungs, leaving him gasping for air. His legs were trapped under the debris, and a searing pain shot through his body as he realized they were likely broken. The pressure on his chest made each breath a struggle, the weight of the boulder pressing down like a vice. Liz, who had been caught in the collapse, screamed in agony as a rock crushed her arm. Her voice echoed through the cave, mixing with the frantic sounds of bats disturbed by the collapse. Raymond, adrenaline surging through his veins, rushed to Liz's side and with all his strength, managed to lift the rock enough for her to pull free. Her arm was clearly broken, but the immediate concern was Sean, who was trapped and in excruciating pain. Raymond turned his attention to his friend, his heart pounding with fear and desperation. Sean's face was pale, his breathing shallow and his eyes wide with panic. The boulder on his chest was enormous, later estimated to weigh between 650 and 800 pounds, and there was no way Raymond could move it on his own. He tried to wedge rocks under the boulder, using his back and legs to shift the weight, but the task was impossible. Every movement sent fresh waves of pain through Sean's body, his broken legs and pelvis unable to bear the strain. Liz, her arm throbbing with pain, knew she had to get help. With a mix of determination and fear, she made her way out of the cave, each step a battle against the shock and pain in her arm. The cold, wet rock walls seemed to close in on her as she navigated the dark, narrow passages, her mind racing with worry for Sean. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, she emerged from the cave and stumbled to a nearby house, banging on the door with her good hand, begging for help. A local resident quickly called the authorities, and soon State Trooper Scott Carr arrived at the scene. Liz, her strength waning, tried to lead him back to the cave, but in the chaos and darkness, her flashlight died. The two were forced to retreat, waiting in the freezing night for additional rescuers to arrive. Back in the cave, Raymond stayed by Sean's side, his heart breaking as he watched his friend struggle for every breath. The boulder's relentless pressure was taking its toll, and Sean's body was beginning to shut down. The pain was indescribable, a searing, all-encompassing agony that left him drifting in and out of consciousness. Each breath was a fight, each moment a battle to stay alive. When the rescuers finally arrived, hours had passed, and Sean was barely clinging to life. The team, made up of volunteer firemen, a physician, and soldiers from Fort Drum, quickly assessed the situation. They knew they had to act fast. Using airbags, they carefully lifted the boulder, stabilizing it just enough to relieve the pressure on Sean's chest and legs. It was a painstaking process, each movement bringing fresh waves of pain to Sean's already battered body. For several hours, the rescuers dug and moved rocks, their hands numb from the cold, and their faces grim with determination. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, they managed to free Sean from the crushing weight of the boulder. He was unconscious, his body broken and battered, but he was alive. They carefully placed him in a litter and carried him out of the cave, the journey slow and treacherous. As they emerged into the cold light of dawn, a helicopter was waiting to rush Sean to the hospital Sean's survival was nothing short of a miracle. 
At the hospital, doctors worked to stabilize him, treating his numerous injuries, internal bleeding, two broken legs, and a fractured pelvis. The county official estimated the cost of the rescue to be around $60,000 to $80,000. In April 1991, 40-year-old Emily Davis Mobley, an experienced caver with a passion for exploration, set out on an expedition to map the uncharted sections of Lechuguila Cave in New Mexico. The expedition began like any other, with Emily and her team descending into the cave, navigating through tight spaces, jagged rocks, and steep drops. The atmosphere was filled with excitement and the promise of discovery. The cave's beauty was breathtaking. As they ventured deeper, the terrain became increasingly challenging. The air grew thinner, and the narrow passages became more constricting. After hours of strenuous exploration, the team reached a particularly remote section of the cave, rarely visited due to its difficulty. The allure of the unknown spurred them on. Emily led the way, squeezing through a narrow passage barely wide enough for her body. The walls pressed against her as she inched forward, her helmet scraping against the ceiling. Suddenly, as she tried to maneuver through an even tighter spot, she placed her hand on a massive boulder to push herself up. But the boulder, loosened by years of dripping water, suddenly slipped and came crashing down on her leg, pinning it in a crevice with a sickening thud. The pain was immediate and overwhelming. Emily's leg was trapped, and every attempt to free herself only made it worse. The unyielding stone bit into her flesh, sending waves of excruciating pain through her body. Her breathing became rapid and shallow as panic set in. Her team quickly realized something had gone wrong and rushed to move the massive boulder crushing her leg. The pain was almost too much to bear. The doctor and her team splinted her leg, but now the pressing question was how to get her out of this dire situation. A message was sent to the surface, and soon a full-scale rescue operation was launched. News of the incident spread, and over 200 rescuers, including some of the best cavers and medical professionals in the country, converged on Lechuguila Cave. Rescuers had to navigate the same tight passages, carrying heavy equipment and medical supplies. The sharp rocks and steep drops made every step dangerous, and the deeper they went, the harder it became to communicate with those on the surface. When the first rescuers finally reached Emily, they worked with extreme care, knowing that any wrong move could worsen her condition. They used ropes and pulleys to slowly and painstakingly move her from one area to another and then lift her up. They were two miles deep in the earth. By then, Emily had bravely regained her composure. Although she had participated in several rescue missions, this was the first time she was being rescued. As one of the most experienced cavers, she ended up leading her own rescue, instructing the team on how to get her out. Remarkably, she even found humor in the situation, requesting pizza as she was starving. Emily had to be carried out of the cave, a task that would take days. The rescuers fashioned a makeshift stretcher and began the arduous journey back to the surface. They had to navigate the same narrow passages, steep climbs, and vertical shafts, all while ensuring her safety. After three days of relentless effort, the team finally approached the cave's entrance. The last stretch was the hardest, an almost vertical climb that required precise coordination. With every ounce of strength they had left, the rescuers slowly and carefully lifted Emily out of the cave. Emily was awake for 30 hours during the final stages of her evacuation, which culminated in her emergence from the cave around 12.15 a.m. She was immediately taken to a hospital, where doctors treated her injuries. Despite suffering severe trauma to her leg, she survived against all odds.